Whether you choose to believe it or not, filmmaking is a collaborative art. Teams consisting of varying sizes with particular skill sets work together to reach their goals. This usually consists of certain people fulfilling specific roles. This includes one person as the director. But what if we were to dismantle this balance and split the responsibilities of a director between two people? That's essentially the idea behind the tennis match format. The term tennis match originates from the YouTube poop community of all things. According to a fan wiki, the first ever tennis match was in 2007 between Conrad Slater and Miscellaneous 10 on Yuchu, which is a YouTube poop forum and portal. The game has a much different approach within the YouTube poop community. Two participants work with the same source and pass edits of it back and forth until it becomes an incomprehensible mess. Tennis matches often had a mixture of collaboration and sabotage that challenged competitors when encountered. While this ended up being a semi-popular format in YouTube poop that's still used today, it wasn't quite the same in other circles. Around 2009, the tennis format was used in Machinima, but adapted for storytelling. The idea is similar to the YouTube poop version with the main difference being an overall narrative. One participant will create a simple premise that ends in a cliffhanger which the other would have to continue from. Popular mediums for these matches were Mario 64 and Gmod, the latter of the two being more common. With its growing presence in Machinima, it wasn't long until the format reached the Blockland film community. In 2010, the first tennis match in Blockland was created, titled XE's Chocolate Bar. This is by far the most prominent Blockland tennis game, created by Flubman and the titular Tenexi. The eight-part series was started by Flubman with the very simple yet flexible premise of XE's Chocolate Bar being stolen with an ensuing chase. The story kept itself from becoming too complex in the earlier parts by sticking to shorter lengths with a handful of named characters that have unique personalities. The goal of the series was clearly quality over quantity, however this proved to negatively impact the creators down the line. Compared to Part 6, Part 7 was lacking in direction. In order to rectify this, Floodman double dipped and made Part 7.5, which is the longest episode in the series at 3 minutes and 28 seconds. With how well received the series had become at this point, ambitions were very high. Part 8 released 3 months after 7.5, the biggest change being the introduction of voice acting. Through annotations, Exe admits, I decided to change to actual voice actors, not realizing the mistake of such an abrupt change within the same tennis series. Although Texas speech voices were used in earlier parts, this was the first to use recorded lines. On top of that, the part would be broken down into two episodes, presumably to lighten the amount of work required. Sadly, Episode 2 was never created, but was planned according to a comment from Exe that states, There are plans, they're just overcomplicated, jumbled together, and thrown in the back of a filing cabinet somewhere. The only evidence of Episode 2 is a video titled ECB Part 8 Interlude, which showcases the setting. And with that, Exe's chocolate bar had unceremoniously ended. It seems as if ambition was the cause for such an abrupt ending with the series becoming too much of an undertaking. Expectations from viewers could also be blamed as its popularity grew. While Part 8 was a jarring shift, the goal of delivering quality didn't change. It's no surprise why this is one of the most inspirational Blockland series. It set a bar not only for tennis matches, but for Blockland videos as a whole. Its story, while straightforward, was told well with gripping cliffhangers and visuals that make it such a fun watch. This series really is timeless, and deserves its place in Blockland film history. Much like the Ways to Die genre, the success of Axie's Chocolate Bar was very influential. A good handful of tennis games were started in 2011, a year after Part 1 of ECB and when the series was gaining popularity. A majority of these matches didn't last beyond a couple of videos. Some ended after just one entry, and many have been lost to time. Everyone was racing to start the next Axie's Chocolate Bar. Its DNA could be found everywhere. For example, the one-part series Green Mat's Diary has a similar setup to ECB. Out of the few matches from 2011, two series stand out. Among them is Dementia by KodZ97 and Nobot. Not counting the filler videos of Exe's Chocolate Bar, Dementia is the longest series at 10 parts. It doesn't quite meet the same level of quality that ECB set as the standard. It does, however, follow the same philosophy of less is more. Though, it also fell into the same trap that ECB did by becoming too ambitious and in introducing things like voice acting. Compared to other matches, its premise is incredibly plain. The main character wakes up in a white void. That's it. There's no other context. 
Aside from some text on screen, this is a very open-ended plot. Half of the episodes are under a minute long with no meaningful plot progression until part 9. Otherwise, the main character will notice something, interact with an object, then walk somewhere else. The final episode of the series, part 10, fully lays out the main character's past all at once. While this series aimed for quantity, another notable series from 2011, Blockland Adventure Mode by Sir Herc One and Lego Pepper, went for quality. This is a landmark series, not only as a tennis match, but in terms of Blockland videos as a whole. I remember watching this series over and over again when I was younger. The biggest difference with this match is that it has a proper setup in the form of an opening cutscene. In the description of the prologue, Sir Herg wrote that this series started after a previously failed match between him and Jesus Fish, someone he worked with multiple times. Whatever that tennis match was, it doesn't exist anymore. The series takes inspiration from other games including Skyrim and some Valve titles. Part 1 establishes a lot of typical game mechanics, such as NPCs and character customization. Unfortunately, the pacing is very slow and the ending is abrupt. Aside from the prologue, it's a very good setup despite the flaws. It took three months for Part 2 to release, but not due to its production as it was started very shortly before its upload date. There's a notable jump in quality here. Not so much with the sets, but everything else is greatly improved. The Skyrim inspiration is more obvious as seen with the dialogue and the visuals. Compared to Part 1, the ending of Part 2 is defined from the start as the characters set and reach their goal, being the cave. It took over a year for the third part to release, but the time it took was evidently beneficial. You can see the effort poured into this video from the very beginning with the fake title screen. The sets also reflect the time put into this part. In fact, it feels like a real game mode at times, especially within the more enclosed areas. As visually captivating as it is, the contents of the video happen spontaneously. It really toes the line between being boring and only somewhat intriguing. Even with its issues, the praise I gave earlier still stands. I personally haven't seen another tennis match which rivals Blockland Adventure Mode. It's probably for the best that it ended prematurely, as much as I wish it continued from Part 3. The amount of work and love put into this series is palpable, even with the breaks between each part. Speaking of, this series is the longest in terms of real time where each part was released in a different year from 2011 to 2013. Now with the bar set even higher, it seemed less likely that the Blockland community would attempt the tennis format again. The most recent matches we've gotten are Milk by Carbon Zypher and Freak and Destructor by Felipe1020 and Lego Pepper. The Milk series is similar to Dementia, just with a higher level of quality. Unfortunately, only Carbon Zypher's half of the series is available. The match follows its premise very closely and slightly diverges from its established goal of buying milk. The series seemingly ends on part 7, but it's impossible to tell if there was ever an 8th video. However, if there was, it would rival Exy's chocolate bar in terms of length. Destructor is the most recent tennis match, starting in 2016 and ending in 2017 with only two parts. I asked Felipe why it ended so quickly, with his answer being similar to why both ECB and Blockland Adventure Mode ended as well. Complications, overambition, all the same culprits as the other series. Destructor had a great start. Part 1 is immediately captivating and stays that way throughout. The action is well done along with the cinematography and editing. Part 2, on the other hand, is confusing and feels just barely related to its predecessor. Episode 1 holds its own as a story and doesn't rely on its follow-up despite the cliffhanger. I'm not gonna lie, Lake of Pepper kinda dropped the ball on this one. And that's it, an unceremonious end to an underutilized format. I personally love tennis matches, and I really wish there were more than the handful we've gotten. Seeing how each person interpreted the other's continuation of the story was so fun. You could just tell that each video was made with the intention of a participant trying to surprise and challenge the creativity of their partner. The simplicity of the format allowed it to be flexible as well, bending to the imagination of the creators. It's also the core to many memorable series that inspired other Blockland filmmakers and introduced the game to new players. Hopefully this encourages you to watch the series I talked about here. Tennis matches are very unappreciated and deserve more interest than they received in the past. Thanks for watching, and uh... <laughs> 
Oh, uh, sorry folks, I think someone put their coffee cup on the script or something. It's, it's a little smudged. Good thing I made a backup. Uh, sorry about this. Looks like we'll have to take this one from the top. <clears throat> Tennis is a racket sport that is played either individually against a single they opponent, singles, or between two teams with two players each, doubles. Each player uses a tennis racket that is strung with cords striking all over the ball, covered with felt, and around the ball.